Okay, we're, we, we've talked about the male star of the year. Who has been the female star of the year from both companies? I think there's several names you can throw out there. To me, there's really been one. There's been one that stuck out above all of them who has yeah, everything. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're talking about Britt Baker. <laughs> I'm not talking about Britt Baker, actually. Oh, you're not? No. no, but Britt Baker is in the running. She's definitely in the running. Well, uh, I'm going to tell, well, tell you right now, uh, going out there and having that death match. Mm, with Thunder Rosa. Doing something that, you know, we don't see too often and and really, you know, relishing it and, and, and you know, falling into it and not, you know, trying to take any shortcuts. That was, I, I must say, that that might have been the most impressive thing I've, I've seen all year uh, from from the women. And I got to get Thunder Rosa her props for being a part of that as well. <clears throat> Coming through reality of wrestling on many, many occasions. Yeah. Um, we hope to see her back on um, one day. Um, but um, that match right there was different than anything that I, 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 I cringed the whole time watching it. It was um, a match that I would refuse to do and quit a company. <laughs> okay. So, so for me, um, uh, you give me your thoughts. Uh, so Britt Baker was my runner up. I Britt Baker as the, you know, the number two of the year to me, it started in January 21 and it, and it continued through SummerSlam. Bianca Belair, I think was my, my best of the year from winning the Royal rumble to going out there, main eventing WrestleMania with Sasha Banks, the two, the first two black women to ever main event a WrestleMania maybe even a pay-per-view. I'm not exactly sure about that. But for her to go out there and, and do what she did, show her athleticism, show her charisma, her ability, carry that title. And by the way, I think that I'm making an early 2022 prediction. She's going to win the Royal Rumble again, back-to-back, -back, and go out there and beat Becky at WrestleMania for that title. That's my hey, man. That's a great story right there for uh, Bianca, um, if she could actually do it. Take nothing away from um, Bianca Belair as well. She's uh, been... And a lot of good stuff. Her, her segments has been um, on point. Um, and, and, and the thing is, as well, she has pulled her load. She hadn't um, owned anything in or anything like that. Um, so definitely um, she's had some great matches. Um, I'm still waiting to see her make me cry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I got to see that. I'm looking for drama, man. I'm not just looking for a match. And, and that's why I threw um, that death match at the top. Um, because it had drama that we have not seen ever from a women's uh, perspective in the United States. I'm not mad at it. I think the, the, you really can't go wrong with this one. But I think that uh, Britt Baker's held it down all year. Bianca, to me, just just beats her out slightly. I got to go back and watch that death match. It was crazy. Well, was crazy I, I know we got. I know we got to take a break. Um, it wasn't just the match. Um, it was. It, it was. You know, Britt Baker. Um, out of just about everybody in that company, her names all, almost ring louder than all of them. Yeah. Her name rings louder than just about everybody in that company, opposed to, you know, Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson, a couple of guys, punk, but her name is up there uh, pretty high on, on the bar. The know? First, I know we have to take a break too, but the first thing that CM Punk said in a wrestling ring after seven years, the first name he uttered was Britt Baker. You know, that definitely and, and, I, and, I, and I say that because she has, she's carved her own niche. She's definitely um, done it her way. And um, she's actually good at what she does. Got to give her props on that, too. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. Be back in a minute. One, you know, one of my plaques here is uh, most, like I said, most improved wrestler of the year. Um, I would say, excuse me, I would say um, Bianca Belair, championship material, but more importantly, most improved. Um, I, I, I try not to put the the carriage before the horse. Bianca is really, really good, but I just do not want to put that pressure on her um, to be able to thinking like that. When there again, um, she's good. She's really, really good. But as far as um, you know, being ranked number one. Um, I would give her that honor, um, but it's not just from a, a wrestling perspective. It's for it's, it's for how far Bianca Belair has come so quickly, so quickly. I mean, she like rose out of the ashes 
to yeah. be um, a contender um, like Rocky Balboa um, against Apollo Creed and then go out and win. Um, not because of any other reason that she's talented, just like Rocky. So, yeah, man, um, give her the props. And it's a great – Bianca's journey this year is also a great illustration of how important the Royal Rumble can actually be because – in that one night, she went from an NXT star who was was she was on the main no she was on the main roster um, for a little bit I think because they called her up the night after WrestleMania 36. But still, she hadn't had that breakout moment until the Rumble. Then she does the Rumble, goes on to Mania, has this great match with Sasha Banks, and now look at her she's number one on the list. She called lightning in a bottle mm -hmm. because she went out there and, and delivered. Yeah, and people said. Oh my goodness, we got something here. And that's all it takes. All it, you know, and all it takes is a spark to create a flame. And that's what Bianca Belair did. That's why, you know, like I say, I can I could put her at number one as well because of not just the wrestling, um, not just the performances in the ring, but like I say, doing it as quick as she did. I don't I don't I don't know too many um that did it as quick as um Bianca did, other than Booker T and Stevie Ray. <laughs> to the greatest of all time, of course. Um, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, 18 months, we was in WCW. Uh, a couple of months after that, we were the world cha tag team champions. I will say this. Um, as far as your top uh, PWI rankings, I'm just going to run for you if you want to know. Um, yeah. In July of 2002, uh, as far as their monthly rankings went, you were the number two wrestler in the world in July of 2002. You were number three wrestler in the world in March of 2002. And you were the number two wrestler. Get this. in the Number two. This is according to ProFightDatabase.com. You were the number two wrestler in the world as far as the monthly rankings go in June of 1993. Before you ever won a world title. Did you know that? Nah, man. I was good. You didn't good. know that, did you? I was good, man. I was good. And then you were obviously top five in the world in 2001 as far as the uh, you know 500. It's, it's crazy. I never knew that. I never knew those knew those stats right there. But that, mm -hmm. that tells me something right there, man. It tells me, um, like like I say, uh, you know, when somebody uh, got their eyes on you, you're being recognized. Um, that says, you you know, you're pretty, you know, you might, you might, you might have something. Um, guys like Steamboat say, man, I want to wrestle this guy. Uh, Ric Flair, WCW Saturday night. I'm in the middle of the ring with, with the Nature Boy. I'm like, man, how is this happening? Uh, you know, Kurt Henning say, man, I want to do an angle with you, you know, make you, um, you know, like Mr. Perfect. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? So to hear that right there, um, to know that um, now that um, I was number two and number three um, ranked wrestler in the world uh, at one point in time in, in this business, um, that that's validation. That's all it is. It's just validation of the hard work and the ones that put the hard work in like Bianca Belair, she's going to get recognized like the Brit Bakers. They're going to get recognized um, because of what they go out and literally do in the middle of the ring. And that's create compelling stories for these fans to look, look at and go, man, that's a hall of famer one day. That's a hall of famer bar none. Um, so uh, more power to them, man. Let's just keep it rolling.